Hello, this is Sean Kelly, and I watched Megalopolis, so yo, you won't have to. Oh, you probably will. An architect uses a powerful building material to create a utopian city in Megalopolis. Caesar Catalina, played by Adam Driver, is the head of the design authority in the city of New Rome, who won a Nobel Prize for developing the infinitely malleable and miraculously strong Megalon, which he has been using to reshape sections of New Rome into a utopia named Megalopolis. This results in Caesar being in a bitter rivalry with New Rome's mayor, Frank Cicero, played by Giancarlo Esposito, which is exasperated when his daughter, Julia, played by Natalie Emmanuel, begins working and falls in love with Caesar. Megalopolis is the passion project from writer and director Francis Ford Coppola, best known for The Godfather, Apocalypse Now, and The Conversation, which he has been developing since 1982. Narrated by Lawrence Fishburne as the chauffeur Fundy Romain, Megalopolis stars Adam Driver as Caesar Catalina, a highly ambitious architect who can manipulate time and use his powerful building material Megalon to create a new utopia. This has resulted in Caesar creating many enemies for himself, including Mayor Cicero, who was once the prosecuting attorney for the murder of Caesar's wife, Sonny, played by Haley Sims. Caesar also faces the wrath of his spiteful cousin, Claudio Pulcher, played by Shia LaBeouf, and former mistress, Wow Platinum, played by Audrey Plaza, the latter of whom marries Caesar's bank CEO uncle, Hamilton Crassus III, played by John Voigt. Uh, so, uh, where do I begin on uh, Megalopolis? Um, so this is a film that it has been in uh, development hell for over four decades. And um, I think it actually might be interesting to go through the timeline, which was uh, posted to social media. So, so Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis of Fable, a timeline. So 1982, Francis Ford Coppola begins working on Megalopolis, generating 160 pages of notes in two months, intending to shoot the movie at Cinecita Studios in Rome, Italy. 1984, FFC writes the first draft screenplay, 103 pages. 1984, Francis Ford Coppola begins collecting what will be thousands of newspaper magazine clippings on intriguing subjects and details that he might include in the screenplay. 1989, biographer quotes Francis Ford Coppola in the book Francis Ford Coppola, a Filmmaker's Life, that Megalopolis was so big and complicated that it would seem impossible to actually pull off. 2001, Francis Ford Coppola begins to work on Megalopolis after directing Bram Stoker's Dracula, intending the budget to be 50 to 70 million dollars. Table reads take place in New York with iconic actors like Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio, James Gandolfini, Paul Newman and Alec Baldwin. Coppola brings in Ron Fricks to shoot roughly 36 hours of second unit high definition footage of New York City. Production is eventually halted after the 9-11 attacks, leaving Francis Ford Coppola conflicted about continuing the project at that time. In 2003, a two week long workshop takes place at the Inglehood State in Napa Valley with actors Ryan Gosling, For Forbirch, Edward James Olmos, Virginia Madsen, and others. 2003, Francis Ford Coppola asks Osvaldo Golijov to compose a Megalopolis symphony for a still non-existent movie. 2019, Francis Ford Coppola merges part of his wine holdings to borrow money to produce Megalopolis, approximately 120 million million. Adam Driver signs on to play the main character, Caesar, starring alongside Giancarlo Esposito, Natalie Emanuel, Aubrey Praza, Shia LaBeouf, John Voigt, and Lawrence Fishburne. 
James Cann, who had famously worked with Coppola on The Godfather, had agreed to appear in the film, but died before production took place, and Dustin Hoffman took on the role. And 2022, Megalopolis begins actual production. And May 2024, Megalopolis debuts at the Cannes Film Festival. September 9, 2024, Megalopolis has its North American premiere at TIFF. Uh, I saw the second screening. And September 27th, 2024, Megalopolis is released in theaters and IMAX. All right. So... Francis Ford Coppola spends 120 million of his own money to make this passion project. However, the film also makes a lot of bad press involving uh, Coppola's uh, filmmaking methods, various allegations of onset sexual harassment, and pretty much he called the film an anti woke production because he casted a uh, Cancelled actors such as uh, Shia LaBeouf and uh, John Voight, who both actually have a uh, quite sizable roles in Megalopolis. So I admit that I was going into Megalopolis expecting not to really like the film, but I was also willing to give it a fair shake. However, kind of like my mood going into the uh, screening at TIFF, um, it was in the IMAX theater, back row. Just before the film starts, a bunch of like film bros enter my row and they just go, Are you ready? There was before Megalopolis and then there's after Megalopolis. And I just wanted them to shut up. I wanted to make my own mind about Megalopolis and I didn't want no hyperbole. And uh, so that's uh, me going into uh, Megalopolis. And I was expecting to like give the film a fair shake. I will watch the film, all two hours and 20 minutes of it. And... We'll see what comes out of that. And it all... Let's just say, within minutes, I couldn't view Megalopolis as anything other than a pretentious mess. And it all begins with Lawrence Fishburne's narration where the American Republic was described as not being different from old Rome. And it's just so pretentious and just like, like what's going on and like so much of Megalopolis features parallels with the fall of the Roman Empire and this includes naming characters after Roman figures and then there was a lengthy Colosseum wedding scene in the film's first half and just the pretentiousness of Caesar Catalina being depicted as some sort of messiah promising to build a better world and in a roundabout way Megalopolis is Francis Ford Coppola's Southland Tales, but not in a good way because I actually like Southland Tales. And um, uh, I just want to talk a bit about um, Adam Driver's casting since it's actually quite coincidental that Adam Driver was cast in Megalopolis because he was also part of a, uh, another uh, dream project. So he was cast as the lead in uh, Terry Gilliam's uh, The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, which was also in development hell for many, many years and uh, finally had a release, uh, I think it was like five or six years ago. And that's actually a decent film, but um, back to Megalopolis. So uh, of the film's uh, ensemble, I'd say uh, Natalie Emmanuel, best known for Game of Thrones, probably ends up having the least uh, cringe-inducing moments of the film. However, uh, Shia LaBeouf. Why is Shia LaBeouf in this? I, I forget all of Francis Ford Coppola's co comments about this being an anti-woke production, but Shia LaBeouf as Claudio Pulcher, he is so cringe-inducing, and like I hated that character whenever he was on screen. Uh, maybe slightly less so for um, Audrey Plaza as uh, 
while Platinum, who um, is probably trying to do the best she can with this like femme fatale role, and uh, but and she is arguably a more antagonistic character in the film than uh, Giancarlo Esposito as uh, Mayor Cicero. Then there's uh, Dustin Hoffman. Um, so in the timeline, he was cast to replace uh, James Caan, who died, and uh, Dustin Hoffman has maybe like a handful of scenes in the film. I still don't know what the purpose of his character, uh, Nush the Fixer Burnman, is, and like <laughs> he just enters the film and leaves the film, and that's that. And um, it's actually hard for me to describe why I did not really like Megalopolis. Is it uh, because the world of the film seems too artificial and gives off an uncanny valley feeling? The film uses a lot of CGI in creating the environments. Is it just me refusing the hyperbole of people believing that Megalopolis is... uh, going to be a masterpiece just because it was directed by Francis Ford Coppola even though it's been decades since he directed a noteworthy feature. Remember his um, last film was Twix which I never saw. I never got much of a release and um, then there's uh... Sean! Sean! Uh, I have a quick question. What do you think about the fourth wall breaking moment in Megalopolis where a guy enters the theater and speaks directly to Adam Driver? Well, thank you, other Sean. I was just going to get to that part. So there is a moment that played in the festival screenings and will pro- and I think it's going to be in select public screenings where a guy dresses a reporter, enters the theater, and, like, asks Adam Driver a question on screen, and it's a gimmick. It is a needless fourth-wall-breaking moment, and it does not really add anything to the film. It does not say anything about the film. It's just, like, it's just a gimmick. It's like a guy walking into the theater, um at the TIFF screening, he was doing a cell phone flashlight, which kind of took the mystery out of it. So it's a fourth wall breaking moment for the... It's a fourth wall breaking moment just to have a fourth wall breaking moment in the film. And uh, some people know thought this was awesome. I thought it was stupid. And that's all I have to say about that. Thanks very much. In some ways... I would say that Megalopolis is a film that is immune to criticism. Many people will go into Megalopolis expecting to either love it or hate it, and they will probably be validated in either direction. There are people who are going to treat Francis Ford Coppola as the Messiah, and I think there's that he's definitely very uh, pretentious himself to the point that he'll post the five-star review of his own film on Letterboxd, I would almost recommend checking out the film just to see how much of a disaster it is or not. All I know is Megalopolis ended up taking up two hours and 18 minutes that I can never get back, and I'm quite spiteful about it, and you can go see Megalopolis, but I am done talking about it, and I'll see you next time.